Up With Crim begins now. The man accused of murdering a Colorado mother is set to stand trial today. We'll explain the case's ties to the Pacific Northwest. And outside a pretty calm and dry start to our Monday morning, but we've got a few snow flurries that are clearing out and a little bit of wind headed our way this afternoon. Details coming up. And this is pretty cool. The SeaTac Airport is offering a new program, how it's working towards being more inclusive. Pretty interesting. Well, hey, good morning. Thanks for starting off your day with us. I'm Tim Pham in for Jen York. You're watching Up With Creme on a Monday. That's right. We are kicking off the work week. It's a pretty nice start to the week so far. You were saying how you were walking the dog this morning, right? right? too early and way too, too cold. <laughs> uh, the next couple mornings mm, we might encounter a little bit more trouble. Ooh, I know. Bundle up. Seriously. So <laughs> 30s right now to start off the day, but as we head into the next couple days, we're talking teens for overnight lows. And when we talk about overnight lows, what we really should be referencing is early morning lows because those temperatures uh, overnight don't get too cold uh, toward, you know, the evening 10 and 11 p.m. time frame. Uh, it's more toward the 6, 7, 8 o'clock time frame where those temperatures are at their coldest. So next couple mornings, uh, we'll be talking more about uh, those teen temperatures. Now, as far as we start off uh, our Monday morning, we've got a wind advisory. That's for everywhere in tan on your screen. Uh, there is still a winter weather advisory off toward western Montana and a portion of the central and southern panhandle, but uh, generally snow showers are going to stay isolated uh, into Montana and a portion of the panhandle. Most of Washington will stay dry today. You can see what we're seeing right now on satellite radar. Most of this off toward central Washington is beginning to taper out. You can see that happen as we speak and uh, we're even seeing over North Idaho just mostly very, very light snow flurries. Uh, nothing too severe to note and obviously dry around downtown Spokane. We'll stick with clouds for the next couple hours. See those clouds parked for a good portion of the afternoon, warming up to the mid 40s by the afternoon. Uh, now, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, that wind is going to be the main worry for the day. We see those gusts jump up to the double digits into your afternoon. Sustained wind speeds around 15 miles an hour, gusts upwards of 30 miles an hour. So we'll talk more about what to expect and whether or not these conditions continue then into our Halloween. That's coming up, Tim. All right, Evan, thank you. Looking ahead, the man accused of murdering a Colorado mom is set to stand trial today. Well, a jury will begin the process of determining if Patrick Frazee killed his fiance. 29-year-old Kelsey Barrett went missing last Thanksgiving. The last time she was seen was in this surveillance video at a grocery store. Barrett has ties to the inland northwest. She has family in Washington and Idaho. Well, police say Frazee was the last person to see Barrett. He's charged with first degree murder and tampering with a body, among other charges. He has pleaded not guilty. He's been in custody in the Teller County Jail since his arrest in December. Also involved in the case is a nurse from Idaho. Police say Crystal Lee Kenny had a romantic relationship with Frazee. She said she took Barrett's cell phone and threw it away in Idaho. The last time the phone pinged was in Gooding, Idaho. According to a warrant, Kenny told investigators she used bleach to keep clean up the crime scene after Frazee murdered Barrett in her bathroom. She added that she watched as Frazee burned the body. This is a developing story. We'll be sure to continue to update you as we learn more in today's trial. Spokane police officers responded to two shootings in downtown Spokane this weekend. Both shootings happened in the busy bar district near West Main and North Division. Officers say a man pulled out a gun at Barachos and fired one round. Nobody was hit. Police say they think they don't think rather the man fired at any specific person. They say it started from a fight. And just minutes later, officers say they responded to another shooting at the intersection of North Washington and Sprague Avenue. Officers say two women were brought to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. They arrested two suspects for first-degree assault. Well, seven students from different high schools in Spokane were able to train to become teachers over the weekend. The program is put on by Project Lead the Way. The purpose of the program is to train high school students in STEM courses so then they can actually teach kids in elementary school. The idea is to start children off at a younger age in STEM courses. Later in this school year, the same students who went through the training this weekend will actually have an opportunity to work with elementary schools in Spokane. Pretty cool. Well, new overnight, the search and rescue attempts for a missing Moses Lake hiker have now changed to recovery only. 
Search and rescue crews have been looking for Rachel Lackaduck after she left on a solo trek to Hidden Lake Lookout near Mount Baker National Forest on October 17th. The news of the rescue efforts being changed to recovery only was announced by her mom on Facebook. A helicopter will be sent out on Wednesday to search the snowmelt. Lackaduck's mom posted, quote, your words of hope and encouragement are still essential to help our families cope with this next phase of our lives. Well, teens who use candy or fruit flavored e-cigarettes are more likely to stick with vaping and in the end vape more. That's according to a new study from the University of Southern California. Several states have banned flavors in recent months to combat the teen vaping epidemic. Well, the Seattle Tacoma International Airport announced several new services aimed at making air travel more accessible to all. Starting today, the airport will offer sunflower lanyards to customers with a hidden disability. The program is the first of its kind in the United States, and the lanyards actually indicate that the person wearing it has a hidden disability like PTSD, diabetes, or autism. An adult changing table has also been added, and they are also starting a hearing loop project that improves the clarity of sound for passengers with hearing loss. Well, that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem. Well, it's time for your speed feed stories you'll see on social media this morning. Well, Nirvana's frontman Kurt Cobain's iconic green sweater worn during the band's performance of Unplugged back in 1993. Get this, sold for $334,000 at an auction. The kicker is that it actually has never been cleaned since he last wore it 25 years ago. And who lives up in a pineapple under the sea? Well, the Ohio State University marching band does. Well, at least it did this Saturday during the halftime show of the Wisconsin game. The show featured several songs from the cartoon SpongeBob SquarePants and appearances from Gary, Plankton, Patrick, and more. And Twitter is loving the performance with half a million views and counting. And have you carved a pumpkin yet? Well, if you haven't, here are some inspiration for you. Now, if you're insanely talented, I tried and it didn't look anything like this. Well, Mr. Oogie Boogie tweeted a selfie as his design for the pumpkin. This is a little cute little Frenchie here. Let's just flip through one more. Do we have any more? Well, yep, that is an awesome one. These are so cool. Some inspiration for you. Well, if we have the VO, we could take a look, there we go, at Creme 2's Taylor Vito's Halloween family tradition. Well, he tweeted these photos um, saying, for roughly the last 25 years, we carved massive pumpkins and hang them in the birch tree in the front of my childhood home. Isn't that awesome? Super cool. Isn't that, that is so cool? That is such a neat tradition. I didn't know Taylor did that. I'm so, they must reinforce that with some serious, sturdy wire or string I or something. I think it looks like a I don't know, a crowbar or something, and then they stick it in the tree. But those pumpkins, if we can, if it keeps going, like, though it was a huge, huge pumpkin. pumpkin. It looked like it was 60 pounds or something crazy like that. We were doing parvin, parvin. <laughs> <laughs> Words. Look how I big know, those I are. It's five o'clock in the morning. We were doing pumpkin carving last week, and I mean, it's harder than it looks. It is. Oh, it is. Mine was. Mm. <laughs> I, is it still sitting outside? Oh, they are. They're <laughs> still sitting in front of the building, and they look horrible now because they've they're just been sitting. Wilted. They're all wilted. Yeah. yeah. I saw a life hack recently on social media of how to keep them fresh. Oh. I, I wish I could. I didn't click on the link, but there's okay. ways that you can like apparently buy that. some stuff and spray <laughs> it and make it last longer. I'm so. sure. I would imagine <laughs> there's some sort of spray or something. It's like yeah. you know Christmas trees with keeping those yeah. fresh. Uh, but I've heard also that keeping them outside right. in colder temperatures can help too. Well, when we they were here in the that. studio, they started well. And yeah, that's outside. where things went. Yeah. Get them outside. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with Halloween just days away this morning, we are asking you, what's your favorite healthy Halloween candy? Remember that, healthy. No you, can, <laughs> you can vote in our new Creme 2 app or on creme.com slash vote. We'll have updated results for you all morning long. And hundreds of thousands of people in California are being forced to evacuate their homes as fires continue all over the state. At 6 o'clock, we'll tell you how firefighters from the Pacific Northwest are stepping up to help. And congratulations to Brian Livingston, who just won two Up With Creme coffee mugs, coffee beans, and a gift card to Thomas Hammer Coffee Roasters. Now, if you'd like to win, you could do that by subscribing to our newsletter or 
enter on the Uplift Tribe Facebook page. We'll be right back.